Greetings, comrades. Uh, this is Comrade Cool coming at you with Mr. Days of Our Lives, a.k.a. Sean, who is here. We're here to talk about The Division. Uh, over the past week or so, a lot of news, uh, Let's Play video footage has come out, and the beta is in about four days. Sean and I are both pretty stoked about it. We did play the alpha, although there isn't much we can talk about regarding that. So... Both of us have watched a lot of this footage. Sean, what's been your biggest takeaway? Like, what's caught your eye with the division thus far? What are you most excited for? Um, I guess the the kind of where this game is setting in to my gaming habits and and playing games with friends and all that kind of stuff. Uh, you know, this game along with Destiny, they're kind of different than other games, right? And they're kind of like digital digital water coolers, if you will. They're one of those games that you play with your friends and just have a blast playing. You shoot the shit while you're playing, and you go and you, you know, can do dungeon runs or you can, you know, go do some PvP and stuff like that. So I'm looking forward to that. Um, but my favorite thing about the division is the environments and the immersion and you know being in the city, and it's just really well done. And I'm excited to explore it. Where I'm sta sitting, standing, whatever. Um, looks good. Looks good enough to play. Doesn't look as good as the demo. I think it looks a little better than Watch Dogs, though. Like, I oh, mean, because yeah. there are just so many examples of laziness with Watch Dogs. Yeah. Um, and and so at the end of the day, I'm excited for it. When I watch the videos, uh, I'm I'm a huge sucker for good UI, and the UI is is pretty cool. I don't think it's as stylized as it was in, in the mm -hmm. E3 demos that we saw. Yeah. I think they've had to come back from yeah. that because a lot of people had trouble maybe processing that, which I'm, I'm sorry yeah, to I'm see, but sure. I kind yeah. of understand. Uh, I don't know what the design you know, the choices were, but... Um, yeah, it's very weird. The, the biggest comments that we've been seeing on like the Division subreddit and just across it, uh, or across any kind of Division news, uh, for me, I've noticed everyone's talking about the bullet sponge issue mm -hmm. beyond the comparison to Destiny. Yeah, uh, and I, I mean, I think we're in agreement on this that that really it boils down to you're playing an RPG first, yeah. even though it looks like a third person shooter. Uh, people are people forget that when you put that into play, though, it's it really makes Destiny a little more like okay. Did, did it throw uh, you off fun. at first? Like like I have to admit, I read I read these complaints. My you know I go man, these people they don't. You know, they need to get hands on. They need to see what it's like. They need to watch more gameplay than making up their mind in the first one minute of watching, you know, this famous YouTuber's video, you know, because um, I was I was surprised by the, the bullet sponge sponginess, if you will. Yeah, I'm not I was surprised by that, that as it, well. It, it took me off guard. I mean, because you you you're coming from the perspective of a, of a shooter. Okay, like you shoot somebody, yeah. you know, a couple of shotgun blasts in the face, they should go down. But right, but well, and it's an RPG, and, and you and can't disregard the parallels of like Daisy and these survival games like H one Z one. You know, those are straight on shooters, and this is this is more of an RPG. It's RPG first, right? And yeah. uh, once you kind of get used to that, then then it it seems like the flow is is really good. Um, the thing that bothered me about it is I was reading the comments and people, they seem to be making like jump conclusions to it, right? They saw the first video that came out that really started showing like actual real gameplay uh, that's going to be representative of like, let's say the beta, right? And um, and the the person who was playing the game was using an LMG machine gun. Is that right? LMG? Mm -hmm. They're using mm -hmm. an LMG machine gun that just sprays bullets, isn't accurate. Uh, the They were in a dark zone where they were fighting like elite, you know, elite... Um, mobs if you will elite enemies that have you know like an armor they have armor bubbles and all this stuff and they were just laying into them with bullets so they weren't like resetting their aim because apparently there's like an auto lock on feature the way that you aim it feels like grand theft auto in a way it feels better than grand theft auto but the way that you like the the aim will auto snap to an enemy's like you know chest and then you can kind of aim up a little bit for their headshot Whenever you're shooting a machine gun, you need to, to to shoot it a couple times and then reset your aim and then shoot it more and shoot it more. Yeah, you know, you a, need it's burst like fire. an LMG machine gun. Yeah, yeah. then then you you kind of need to lay out like a bunch of throughput so your, well, your party members can do their thing. I mean, it's also not just but, that, but, and this is one thing that really excites me to see. You don't see it a lot. Is kind of um, 
like military mechanics in games, like the biggest being suppressing fire. For those of you, you know, right. Archer fans, where if you remember Serial going like suppressing fire, I mean that's a that's a real thing. Uh, that it's a military yep. technique that people use, and and it's called suppressing fire because you're suppressing bitches, like you're putting them down. And most LMG and machine gunners, game. yeah. That's then then this isn't the game, yeah. That and that's their job. If you got if you have like the hog or the pig, that's what the in Vietnam, that's what used they called M sixty. It was it was the hog because if you did not maintain control over your weapon, if you just you know held that trigger down, you would burn through your ammo in thirty seconds. I mean just fire so quickly. So you, you you're supposed to fire in short bursts, you're inaccurate, and you are going to suppress people. And you'll notice uh, whenever you suppress an enemy, you know it'll come up in mm-hmm. white above their head, suppressed, and and when right. that happens, it buys your teammate a massive amount of leeway to either flank them, right. to to line up a better shot, um, or to heal yourself. <laughs> yeah, I mean, yeah, heal yourself. You use one of your yeah. one of your powers, one of your techniques. So, and I mean, what games have I also said? the other the biggest game for me. The, that suppression comes to mind is Ghost Recon Future Soldier, which was another Ubisoft game that that was kind of a letdown. It, it looked so much cooler than it was. And I have actually another example of an E3 demo that then didn't match up to the gameplay at all. They, in fact, they ditched the famous E3 demo that was in this Russian seaport. Huh. Um, but I like that game, and they had suppression in that game, especially in the multiplayer, where when you suppressed or when you were suppressed mm-hmm. in multiplayer, your screen got all blurry. You know, you had you couldn't move. Right. I mean, or if you could, it just you moved at a slower rate. Uh, and it looks like that you can put people. It'll be interesting in PvP, which happens in the dark zone. Um, what happens or how the suppression mechanic works? Um, yeah. But, but yeah, I'm curious to see how that works. There, but there's a lot of that. Getting back to it. Like the the point I was I was saying was like the person that the the first footage that came out and it's kind of unfortunate in a way because it was you know someone playing the game and they were shooting elite mobs mobs that were like two levels higher than them and uh, they were using like a machine gun and I'm not going to say they were playing wrong but like I think that they could have been shooting the gun a little more effectively but they were playing wrong and <laughs> and every but they were playing but um you know and you read you scroll down in the comments and everyone is just like yeah like. The game just lost it for me. I didn't realize it was so bullet spongy. You know, this game's supposed to be realistic. And it's like, first of all, it's a video game. Like, I hear where you're coming from in terms of it breaking your immersion. But there are so many games that are post-apocalyptic games that do weird shit, right? Like Fallout, for example. Um, that, that game does some weird shit. You know, in this game, you put down little grenades that, like, are remote control. And they, they go and find enemies and blow up and you throw grenades across the map and heal your friends with heal grenades. I mean, there's some weird shit in this game, right? It's mm-hmm. not supposed to be hyper realistic. Uh, granted it's in a more realistic setting. I hear, I hear what you're saying in the complaints, but I don't think that it's as bad as you think it is. Um, there's another video, there's more videos that have come out and it shows pretty clearly that the bullet sponge stuff is not as bad as you think. In fact, the same person played the game and he started using a pistol and he was using a green pistol and he was three shotting enemies that were his appropriate level that were regular mobs. So, you know, the bullet sponge stuff, I am just, I'm kind of surprised that everyone's freaking out over it. But I think, it, I think it's again, awareness. I kind of hear the I mean, thing. I think a lot, and yeah. you also have to appreciate a lot of people, a lot of these people watching this are, are maybe thinking Gears of War, they're thinking third person shooter, they're not thinking RPG, you know? And, and yeah. even Destiny, um, which there are plenty of bullet sponges in that game, first person shooter aliens you know maybe just the fact that it's it's really closer to this game is closer to call of duty than destiny is closer than to call of duty honestly even right. though they're yeah first I'd, I'd agree shooter. with that so right uh, destiny the enemies have like certain colored shields and, and stuff yeah. like that in I this mean, game it's like it's like g thugs running around with like baggy sweatshirts and shit yeah. so no i which, hear the complaints they have their own shields their own armor if you don't think that the designers like looked at this and really tried to find a good solution, then you're kidding yourself because um, you can either like there are a couple solutions to this, right? You either have enemies that take less shots, but you have more of them, right? That's like seems like it's one solution. Um, and at that case, like you don't want like it's also not realistic to have uh, 45 dudes running at you at one time and you just mowing them down with guns. Like that's kind of dumb too. I hate when games do that. And uh, and then I don't know what another solution would be. Um, 
Well, having enemies like wearing armor and shit, I guess, like like that could be cool. So I don't know. They and they do. I mean, when you go up against the elite, the veteran, and I think the boss mobs, some of some them, of them have some armor. Them They've don't. got the white bars, so, and some of them don't. Yeah, um, like they have armor on the health bar, but I'm, we're talking like the way it looks, like the, yeah, the immersion breaking stuff, yeah. right? That's true. Like wearing like makeshift plates and stuff that they scrapped up in the dark zone. Like that stuff could be cool. Could and be we don't know cool. if that stuff's in there or not. I mean, this is true. just a small glimpse of the game. Or, or if so it can be we'll added in. Yeah, definitely. Um, but um, but to, so so going back to, I mean, for me, I look at the, those complaints and I just think, yeah, hey, it's it's a this is a much more mechanical game. Not to say that it's you sure. know super massively so, but but I, right. I, I'm a huge nerd. And watching these kind of things and going, <laughs> oh man, okay. yeah, like okay, I'm gonna roll with a squad of four, and I'm gonna have my guy who's got the sniper rifle, and he's gonna be my Overwatch guy, which is you know for those of unaware, Overwatch is usually the position that that stays back and in a higher position and watches over okay, nerd. everyone, yeah. Uh, and then I'll have my suppressor guy, the guy with the LMG, and like, and his job will just be yeah. aggro. And so now you're setting up kind of like the tank, the damage dealer, another damage dealer that maybe has and the bitch boy that and the medic, everyone. yeah. Yeah, the, the healer who is that'll be me who is middle game <laughs> yes you love playing bitch uh, the, um, the, the best the best thing about all of this bullet sponge like talk is nobody is bitching about not having a crouch button anymore like that's the best thing to come out of this because before the bullet sponge stuff all of the complaints were yeah game game looks pretty cool but uh but, why can't i why can't i crouch, can I, crouch? Yeah. I mean i think that that would be more immersive right like and it's it, like, well it, like the whole, they address this they they thought about it and they decided that crouching doesn't fit you know, because it forces because you it's a cover based shooter yeah no it, right and and honestly i think that argument would have a point if the cover didn't look as smooth as it does i mean not just right. not just the cover like moving in and out um and it's interesting to watch yeah. some of these people and see them really not take advantage of the cover and learn to kind of go hey all right i've got to be in right. it um, you but can, there's there's yeah. so much information provided. I, I don't know if you notice there's a massive difference between the video footage we're seeing today and then the E3 footage. And when you're going cover to cover now, a white line will appear and kind of show you the path that you can take to that right. particular cover, which is important because you need to see where you're going to be exposed. There's lots of little stuff like that that that's cool. I mean, I just, again, this UI is... They did a good job with it. For those of you unaware, you know, you PC player, Sean and I will most likely be playing this on the PS4, but PC players, the UI, I believe, is one of the most customizable um, in video games. A lot of the dev team on this game are PC gamers themselves, and so they wanted to make sure that it was a very uh, PC modable game. And also, if you have the computer, you know, the cash for such a computer, it's going to be looking incredible on the PC, yeah. there have already been a few screenshots that have come out just just yeah. talking about that. I mean, it's really isn't that refreshing? Stuff. Like, it's refreshing to see like a PC version of a game. And this is kind of sad. This is kind of a sad state of like where PC gaming's at. But um, especially with the Batman fiasco and having such a bad PC port, so bad that they had to pull the game off of Steam for a Batman game. <gasps> That's crazy, right? Whoa. Like, yeah, it's just crazy. And and so for for this team to come out and like withhold so much information about the PC and then come out and go yeah unlocked frame rate completely customizable UI you can move your UI wherever you want um, you know it runs at this these resolutions you know um, it it's the definitive version essentially uh, but I'm going to be playing on my PS4 so I'm hoping that it looks a little bit better than the Xbox one. That would be, cause all we've seen, all we've seen right so far is, um, Xbox one yeah, footage and then some PC PS4 footage, footage just got, yeah, just no PS4 was... footage yet, but we'll see how that looks. Yeah. So, um, anyway, talking about, so, so, you know, obviously we're gonna be playing the beta in a couple of days. What are you most excited to check out? Like, what are you looking forward to? What are your expectations? What do you hope to get out of it? Will you marry it? Oh man. Are you going to let it buy you dinner? Yes. Like what's going to happen? Here? Yes. I will let it buy me dinner. I am most excited because we played the alpha. I think I can say this because we played the alpha on the Xbox one. I'm excited to, to just to see the PS4 version. Um, because I'll admit it. I've just enjoy games on my PS4 a lot better. They, they run better. They look better. You know, um, getting into parties is easier. Um, all of that stuff is just so much better on the PS4. So, uh, this is coming from my old Xbox guy, Xbox OG, you know, and 
So I'm excited just to see the game and get out there and see the weather effects. I mean, that really is the weather effects were incredible. Some of my favorite stuff, yeah. favorite stuff about the game, yeah. and uh, oh, it's it's fun. Yeah. I definitely I'm I'm in the same boat. What about um, you? I'm, I, yeah. You know, the PS just I want to see the experience in the PS4. I'm not gonna. I don't think oh. I'll ever get it on the PC. Uh, just because I'm not a PC gamer. I like popping the disc in my console, having a controller, um, that whole experience. I just, honestly, I have uh, Division Fever. I was about to say Destiny Fever. I don't know. I I have Division Fever, and I'm I'm really stoked to play it. It's one of the few games that I've pre-ordered the Gold Edition with all the DLC content. Um, Mm -hmm. I picked that up on Amazon because I'm a Prime member. You get 20% off all new stuff. Uh, Definitely the most efficient way to go about it if you haven't pre-ordered it yet. Um, But yeah, the the PS4 experience, getting to play any any game that I can play with my friends is huge. I mean, I've been I've been Mm -hmm. dealing that with you where like, hey, let's play Halo, let's do this, and it just now it's hard to play games alone, especially since there are more and more games that are not they don't have a good single player option yeah there's something weird about like like this game is getting so many people talking about the parallels with destiny there's so many comparisons and all this stuff and it's kind of weird because there's pretty different games but there's enough of like these kind of mmo centric game systems within the division and destiny that that like i said earlier that digital water cooler where it's one of those like super sociable games and you know and i had fun playing it by myself too so it's it's really it's really interesting how there's so much destiny talk around it and stuff, but it's also super social. One thing I wanted to mention, I guess that I'm also looking forward to is um, the uh, from the beta footage we've seen on people's YouTubes that are releasing and stuff. There's like full talent trees and stuff, so I'm interested to see some of the new perks, how the turrets work, and actually getting to see some of the class roles flushed out. And yeah, if definitely. the game fits that like that holy trinity of tank healer, you know, DPS and, and see if it's like that or if it's, you know, what a lot of the, the latest trend is to kind of have everybody do a little bit of everything. Um, I know that this game looks like it has pretty dedicated healers, but how how differentiated is the DPS going to be from the aggro guy that uses a yeah, shield? Yeah, versus stuff, the tank. You know? And it'll look like right. you can you pick ten, two classes trees you can't do all three but you can pick two and you mix and okay. so how right you know how dedicated if you completely dedicate yourself to one is that more rewarding you know and i'm sure there are going to be people who are all talking about min maxing <clears throat> for damage or for efficiency or right. whatever um so right. that'll be interesting as, it, as and, it develops and it seems like you can play each class like uh you can play the classes different ways you're not just locked into a single type of game no, play, right? because not, yeah. the guns the guns have like customizable parts on them right like you can put a suppressor on a long range scope a uh, rifle you know uh, i'm sorry you can put a suppressor on like a long range rifle that's like a single shot semi or you can put um, a suppressor on a um, an smg that's a close range thing you know um, I think even there are shotguns that you can have suppressors. I think I might have seen that. I'm not sure. I could be wrong. But, like, you can really decide how you want to play, you know. Um, you can be the DPS guy that goes a little stealth, and that's the way that you don't draw aggro. Or you can have your tank go loud and proud, and, you know, you can just play DPS and try to min-max and get as much damage yeah. where you're just hoping that your tank will out-aggro everything, right? There's all these different ways to play the games and, and the guns, uh, to play the game, and the guns open up uh, new play styles and stuff. Um, you know, you can do, what can you do? We've seen, like, well, I mean, we've seen snipers, we've stuff seen and LMGs, we've seen silencers, we've seen... Long-range scopes, short-range yeah, scopes. Uh, yeah. Shotguns. I mean, and... and who knows like the the end benefits and the level of attachments like if the attachments are going to have good quality blue quality epic uh, i haven't seen a lot on the crafting system and i'm not i don't know if that'll be in the beta or not right. but definitely definitely of interest i haven't seen anything for the crafting um, system yeah right. um that's all the time i'm not too excited i don't expect much to come out of it just because I haven't seen games do good crafting systems. No, I mean I there there hasn't a been a time. single one. Even even the WoW it's always crafting like, system has never you know. Yeah. Sean and I were big WoW right. players. We weren't really impressed with it. It just doesn't do. It's just I, I don't know how you do it's that. It's like right? gives you something to collect whenever you're out in the world, yeah. right? And then like you can take those things collected and make some loot that sometimes is a little better than what you can find. But you usually just find the best loot out in the world. They want you to go out and find that shit. And so um, yeah. Yeah. I don't know, but but also like guns that are uh blue and purple and orange in this game, they have perks on them. 
Yeah. They have like different perks and stuff. So it's not just customize your gun with the silencer or, or, or you know, a larger clip or whatever. It's um, improve the accuracy with the scope. It's uh, yeah, get XP you know, with headshots. RPG. Uh, yeah, yeah, exactly. Little R- um, RPG yeah. boons, little bonuses. Um, so that'll yeah. shift. Whether that's random or if that's going to turn into kind of what what's happened now in WoW, where you have to do the same dungeon, the same content over and over, hoping for that perfect role because everything's so randomized, everything's RNG. Oh, man. I mean, that that could be. Or, you know, if if those secondary stats, like they're tertiary, they're, they're not really as vital, um, and then it becomes kind of a fun thing. Uh, we'll see. I don't think WoW's perfected it. We'll see what WoW does in Legion. Uh, we'll see how the Division does it. The, the biggest thing, I think, when you say environments, what people immediately come to is the 20, I think it was 2013 or 2014 E3 demo that Ubisoft did. And Ubisoft yes. is known, known for this at this point now of, of creating these amazingly beautiful demos that say, hey, in-game footage, even if it's alpha. Um, obviously, it yeah. does not look like that. I mean, just looking at, at the video footage that's out there, uh, yeah. what's your response to that? That stuff is starting... That stuff is starting to get really old De- from Ubisoft, I, Definitely. Right? I mean, it's not a reputation that it's, you want to start being known for. Uh, right. It started with Watch Dogs, and it, the, the visual downgrade, if you will, was so much that I just kind of skipped that game at first. You know, I was like, I'll maybe pick it up when it's cheaper. Mm-hmm. Now all this time has gone by since Watch Dogs release. I never went back to it. Just there are a lot, there's a lot of competition out there, right? Well, The Division did the same thing there's a visual downgrade from what we've seen in the released footage and stuff we're allowed to talk about and all that but um you know the game still looks good like the environments and stuff and um i was disappointed at first but i had really low expectations because of the way that ubisoft's been been doing this you know kind of vertical slice if you will showing off the the best stuff and and it's, it's kind of disingenuous in a way. Like, I just have to get this off my chest for a second. Whenever Ubisoft comes in and they do this, like, really small vertical slice of their game, and they have these artists come in and, you know, programmers and all these people that that spend so much time cluttering up an area with garbage bags and all this awesome, like, density of the environment, and they have no intention of... Um, doing all of the environment in the game that's with that same capacity of like man hours and manpower and all that stuff then i think that that's disingenuous of them. i mean it's a teaser i can understand yeah. if they're right i can understand if they're doing like a target render and you know because they're in early stages of the game and early stages of the engine and all that stuff and they want to kind of show what they're shooting for and in terms of um you know uh where they want the game to be later on but you know, it just seems like there's so much clutter and density and and in, in the environment, it looks so good that you just have to wonder if they ever had intentions of paying artists to really flush out the environment that much, you know. But what I can say is that my expectations were lowered so much because of games like Watch Dogs, but um, seeing this footage come out from some of these YouTubers and, and um, you know, other people... Uh, the environments are awesome whenever the heavy weather kicks in and yeah, the it lighting is and stuff. It's yeah, absolutely it's, it looks really, really good. And then there's still some really good textures in there. And uh, the game looks great. It's just was never intended to ever look as good as what they first showed us. You know, I mean, I, I it's just kind of a weird. We'll thing. never. I don't think we'll ever know. I think one thing that's happening with a lot of games, and you can you can even track this with Destiny, is they they promise big. And then they can't really deliver because, and I, I think this tracks to basically corporations, people who who don't really know how to make money off of video games, but they they still they've bought a business, you know, like Activision owns mm-hmm. Bungie. Um, I mean, I don't know if they own Bungie, that's but that's the publisher. And so, at the end of the day, these guys are working for these people who don't look at a game and, and the quality of the game. They view the quality of the game or, or view the game itself uh, based on money. How much is it going to cost to make this game and how much is it projected to sell? How much does it actually sell? Uh, right now, there's some drama going on from the Destiny 
subreddit, I mean, I know we're, we're getting away from the whole division point, but uh, allegedly there is there was a Bungie employee who anonymously posted saying, you know, Destiny didn't do as well as it was supposed to. And as a result now, we don't have the money what? to make new content. Yeah, I'll have to link this to you later. Um, but but that's a massive that's a massive thing. Even when you take something like Division and you take somebody like Ubisoft, which, which I mean, they haven't been doing terribly, but they haven't been doing amazing either, especially with the Assassin's Creed franchise. Um, and you look at Watch Dogs, which was, I mean, I'm, I'm pissed off, man, being from I'm Chicago myself. I'm curious what their projections were. Yeah. And who who knows? But but you you were from Chicago, like I'm, or I mean, you lived in Chicago for a while. I'm I'm born and raised here. Spent a lot of time. I was so stoked to see that. You know, thinking okay, Ubisoft is going to do this like modern kind of quasi cyberpunk Grand Theft Auto, mm-hmm. where you're a good guy. And it yeah. was nothing even close to that. Um, I haven't finished yeah. the game. And but we've had we've talked about that. Yeah, we've had the the Grand Theft Autos that took place in New York, and you know I've yeah. been in New York, Los but Angeles, it's different Miami. whenever you live there. And yeah. I, I was like, oh, Chicago, like it's such an awesome city. It's my favorite city in the whole world, and I was so stoked for what they could have done with that. And then I looked at the overhead map, and Chicago was on an island. It was just very odd. Um, but that wraps up all the time we have for today. Uh, thanks for for tuning in and listening. We're going to be doing this again after the beta, and we'll kind of compare notes and and see how we feel. Talk about the things that we were looking for. Talk about the things that we uh, weren't looking for and, and were surprised by. You know, all that jazz. Uh, Sean, thanks for joining me. Feel free to check yeah, out Sean's me. channel on Twitch. Uh, Days of our lives. Mm-hmm. There'll be a link in YouTube uh, and my own comrade cool. Thanks again, guys. Have a good one. See you.